Hello, I'm Sean Brenneman, Agronomic Service Manager with Syngenta Canada, and I'm here today with Eric Richter, who is an agronomic sales rep with Syngenta, and Eric's our resident soybean expert. Eric has over 30 years experience in the soybean industry, and I'm pleased to be here with you today, Eric, to talk a little bit about some soybean leaf diseases and what growers can do to really make sure they're maximizing their yields. Welcome, Eric. Thanks, Sean. So, 30 years experience, Eric. When we look at the last 30 years, you know, growers traditionally in the past, soybeans used to be the crop that they would plant, spray, and harvest. Very little in-season management. But that's not the case anymore, is it? That's kind of changed over the last number of years as growers are trying to push the envelope and really try to maximize their soybean yields. So what do you, what do you think growers can do, uh, specifically looking at soybean diseases, to help make sure that they're pushing those higher yield potentials? Well, a great question, Sean. And I think first thing we have to realize is that the genetic potential of soybeans is over 250 bushels an acre. Yeah. There are growers in the U.S. that are consistently achieving 80 to 100 bushels per acre, but it's in a high management system. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got an opportunity, a really good opportunity here in Ontario to help growers grow a better crop and, and focus in on disease management. If we do that, um, we will reduce one of the major stressors on the soybean crop. And as we know, a healthy plant yields more. So when we're talking about uh, leaf diseases and what growers can do to understand what's going on on their farm, what are some of the things that you'd like to recommend or some of the practices that you'd like to do so that growers can, can actually understand what's happening in my fields? One of the, the key activities that growers sh should do is scout their fields, uh, actively scout, uh, different times of the year, but what they, what they need to be looking for is those diseases that uh, we'll mention here in a minute. And it's important to realize that uh, other symptoms in the field, um, insect pressure, um, drought, even nutrient deficiencies uh, can look like diseases. So scouting very quickly, uh, it's easy to do, uh, can identify those diseases that we need to make some corrective action on. So I, I understand on those specific diseases that you're talking about, they probably come in at different times through the season and affect that crop. What are some of those diseases that growers should be looking for out in their crops? Well, one of the ones that we have a problem with here in Ontario is Septoria brown spot. Um, and the reason being is roughly a third of the acres in Ontario uh, are beans on beans. And this one is, is notorious for for coming in and, and, and really uh, being above the threshold level in those beans on beans or, or even fields that have tight rotation of soybeans. Uh, Septoria brown spot would be one. It survives in the residue? It does. It comes, and as many of the foliar diseases, the, the source of the inoculum is from that old soybean residue. So other diseases that we have problems with would be powdery mildew, uh, downy mildew, frog eye leaf spot, What's interesting is often they occur individually, um, almost like a, a nuisance disease, low level, below threshold. And if that's the case, uh, it's, there's no impact on yield and no significant impact on yield. Right. But what we often really see now in Ontario, in the Great Lakes Basin, in Ontario f growers' fields, we, we see weather conditions that are conducive for, for all three of those. And we get a cumulative effect. Additive, yeah. All three of those added together, uh, in the end, can have a significant impact on yield. So keeping that plant healthy, making that fungicide application will definitely give the grower a good return on investment and maximize maximize their their yields. That makes sense. Even though one individual disease might not be the threshold, when you add them all together, you might have that leaf area that's impacted and not fulfilling that crop yield that's exactly. needed. Okay. So when talking about fungicides and specifically looking at maybe leaf diseases versus a disease like white mold, sure. what are your recommendations to growers who are trying to combat those diseases out in the field? Well, let's look first at, at white mold. A fungicide application here typically has to be made slightly earlier, this R1 stage or flowering. initiation of flowering. We're trying to protect uh, the flower. That's the point of infection for white mold. And what's interesting is most of the varieties that are grown in Ontario are what are called indeterminate uh, varieties. They flower over a long period of time. So with the right re weather, or we could say the wrong weather, uh, the grower may actually have to come back in and do another fungicide spray at perhaps the R3 stage. If you've got those wet conducive conditions again, exactly. you might have to come back in and spray secondly. And then for leaf diseases? So for foliar diseases, it, it's different. 
we're actually going to recommend to the grower to make that application a little bit later. Um, our late R1, R2 stage, the pin bean stage is really what we describe it as. And it is interesting in our data that Syngenta has done a lot of work and we're seeing that two to two and a half bushel response on uh, application of fungicide uh, and the control of leaf diseases. So it's a good return on investment and, and again, a great program to help a grower uh, maximize the return per acre on their soybean crop. Ah, excellent. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for all your information. And uh, Sean Brenneman signing off for Syngenta Canada. And for more information, visit syngentafarm.ca. Thank you.